foreground content, strong language from the beginning and throughout. When I walked up to the house, you don't just go straight in. There's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I wasn't aware of. And I literally remember getting there, having my full bags checked. You know, there was all these different producers coming in to have conversations with me. There was a sound guy that I'd never even knew was a job coming in, micing me up. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? And then I was just in this room on my own, waiting to go in. And I remember that wait was torture. And then I was in. Hello. Who's that? Hello. The doors opened and the first ones arrived. It's a girl. Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm Abby. I'm 19. When I hit the town, it's all about drinking my body weight in vodka and having a cheeky neck on. When Abby first came into Georgia Shaw, she had bright orange skin. She had blonde extensions in. She was just young and dumb. She was exactly how I was in my first series. I was absolutely shitting myself. So I was born in Newcastle in 1990. There was me, my mum and dad, and my older brother, Lewis. Dad always tells us stories about apparently when I was dead little and I was still in my nappies and stuff and I started walking and I apparently I used to walk around like a, a little man because I was still even quite stocky then. James is baby, he was very, very strong and I remember having uh, some alterations done when we lived over in Gossip. And there was James running around the garden just with a nappy on and the workman said, God, look at him, he's like a little man. Because even then he had muscles. He had a six pack. My childhood growing up was amazing. Obviously, I had my brother there, and there's not a massive gap in between us. We're only 18 months difference, so we were always playing football together. It was like having a best mate as well. We did fight a lot, but what siblings don't? When we were younger, I would always wind him up, and then he would lash out at me, <laughs> and then I would whinge and try and get him in trouble with me, mum and dad. He was the older one, but I would always win. So when I was about 13, I remember I had one of the teachers come in and they were like, oh, James, um, your dad's coming to pick you up. And I was just like, oh, God, what's going on here? I got in the car and I could tell like, my dad was upset and I was just like, is everything all right? And he was just like, your mum's had a really bad accident. I mean, she's okay now, but at the time, it was the scariest thing ever. So unfortunately, my wife Anne had a, a, an aneurysm uh, to the brain, um, and she actually collapsed unconscious in one of the fruit shops that I had. And it was devastating. When I was told at first that my wife had 10% chance of survival, it, it makes you way up life and... The doctor said, prepare for the worst, so obviously emotions were just obliterated, really. We were both terrified. Um, when we were 15, we thought we were going to lose our mum. It's just like, your world ends, doesn't it? That was a really hard time for me growing up. It was crazy, like, it was kind of just like the world had been turned upside down because we'd all kind of relied on my mum so much. My dad had two businesses. He was flat out of work, as well as going to the hospital twice a day. So I would step up, I would do all the cooking, making sure my dad was well fed and my brother was looked after as well, and James would help with the cleaning around the house. I needed my head, you know, keeping straight, and the, the two lads definitely did that. She was in a coma for about three months and came out fighting and she's recovered and she's still here now. Um, I can't imagine what it would have been like growing up without a mom. And I definitely think it's moulded us into the man I am today. Subscribe now for loads of Mint Geordie Shaw vids. Is that right now? Are you Subscribe now.